Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And we're not in the garage today. We are in Arno Road, Oxton, Birkenhead. Why are we here? Well, this is actually where I grew up. I lived in Arno Road in Birkenhead from the age of, oh, I don't know, about four, three, four, up until I left home when I was 18, 19. So yeah, lots of childhood memories from this period, but there is one particular day that we're celebrating on this video. And I was just coming home from school. I used to choose, sometimes I was normally on a bike. This is the other half of Arno Road here, and it's a bumpy road, it's not made up. And I used to quite enjoy this bit because it was all bumps and I used to bash down here on my bike. I had a special bike for doing that. Or if I was on one of my road bikes, I came down this hill and it's quite a tricky break into Arno Road. And my teacher actually from school used to live here, Jock Austin, there was a Rover 110, if you remember them, parked outside there and I used to scream around this corner and I, we lived just a few doors down here. And there wasn't ever any really fancy cars down here. There was a, oh, it was a Triumph PI 2500 lived here. I think that was probably the poshest car on the street. But generally it was a mix of Vivas, Minis, that sort of thing. There's a Vauxhall factory down the road from here. So there was always a lot of Vauxhall sort of dominated. There was a marina, I seem to remember, down here as well. So just a normal day, coming home from school, four o'clock. Right. So I walked down towards our house. There was a really surprising car. I just saw this glimpse of a car I've never seen before. And it was this one. A Lancia Fulvia Sport, 1600. in red with a black stripe on it <laughs> this was this was a complete surprise to me at sitting outside my parents house and it turned out we had i've done this story before on harry's goers but my parents were into having real coffee not instant coffee and they used to buy coffee grounds and um, from a, a lovely lady who used to visit round the house and deliver the coffee to my parents in coffee beans and sometimes ground coffee because they wouldn't drink instant coffee <laughs> and uh, every now and then Heidi's husband used to take over and he worked at the corner garage in Greasby which is an Italian car specialist and there used to be generally sort of Alfa Julia's and stuff like that but one day he brought this car and yeah coming over from school that day I looked at this car I thought Wow, <laughs> I'd never seen anything like it. So racy and car. And I wasn't, I saw a new car, but I wasn't into car. My dad had a Diane 6, Citroen Diane 6. He was, he loved fuel economy. We have a place in Wales and all he cared about was how little petrol he could use um, going 41 miles to our cottage in Men in the Wig in uh, North Wales. So this wasn't really his sort of car at all. But to me, in 1973, I was age 14, I just thought, this is it. And obviously, if you're a regular watcher of Harry's Garage, you'll know this is the car I saw, the very car. And after two years restoring it, I just want to relive this moment of just seeing this thing in this street. And it looks just as good today as it did 50 years ago. It still was shocking, still sort of outlandish around the other cars here. And it just says, drive me. And I suppose, yeah, once I'd seen this car, I then started the journey. I had, if you went back to this period, I had a collection of cycling magazines. I didn't have car magazines, but this car sparked the interest. And we all know where that led <laughs> with everything else I've done in the collection. And here, I used to do lots of things. I had a Beetle, Volkswagen Beetle. I have changed engines in Volkswagen Beetle in this courtyard, with this sort of parking space here. I've done an engine on the Citroen Diane 6 in there. I've, uh, oh, I've done an MGB GT, I used to do mechanics out here. It's what you did back in the 70s. You used to fiddle with it. But this was such a dream. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, because I've got the keys to this car now, I'm going to take you on the journey. My special roads around here, which was really going to our cottage in Wales 
and there's one particular section where we go riff into Kerrig Dridgen, which was my Nürburgring. That was my special road. And any car or bike, motorbike I bought, that was the road I wanted to take it on. And now I'm going to take this Lancia. been wondering why it's taken a while before we've done a review on this little Lancia. Well, I took, I, it was, I needed to run it in and I wanted to get it properly running so I can then use the engine in anger, etc. on this video. And I just wanted to come here as the first video because this is what this car was all about. This is all about memories for me. It's a slight going down memory lane very much of this car. And it's all great, the rebuild. The one thing it's not very good is trying to do hill starts because the engine is a bit, is a bit racy. You do it, do a race start with a proper tool. But trying to do a gentle start is not what this car is all about. since the engine was rebuilt, so it's properly run in there. But it, we haven't actually done the full dyno yet, because I wanted to wait until there's a few more miles on it before we go for ultimate power, etc. But yeah, it's been on a dyno and we've re-jetted it and all that sort of thing. We're actually going to fit some more longer trumpets on it, so it's a bit easier at lower revs. It doesn't really like running below 2,000 RPM anyway. But yeah, just coming back to my old haunts, uh, it's pretty special. The car came from Corner Garage, we called in there this morning. Great guy, Cliff, now runs Corner Garage, completely different, not an Italian car specialist, but still an enthusiast. He had a Daimler V12 in there, the, a Series 1 XJ, midgets, and a sort of Westfield thing as well. But because that was a Lancia dealer in the world, it was bizarre, we didn't really have exotic cars up here, but we had quite a few Lancias, all because of the corner garage. And so, yeah, friends and mum had a Beta Coupe, and I had this across the road later, after I'd moved away, they got a little a Fulvia Sport like this in Arno Road as well. I don't know, you used to see Lancia if I go back to the, to the 70s in, in the Wirral but uh, not Fulvia Sport 1600s. I say, I only saw this one and another one in period. But what I'm trying to do now, there's, um, I'm gonna escape from the world because you can see it's all a bit bunged up. I think it's school coming out time here. And I will go into North Wales. This is a run I used to do almost on a weekly basis because of my parents' cottage. A bit I can never get over looking back at this time. I used to cycle this 41 miles. I used to have school on a Saturday. And it was lessons in the morning, games in the afternoon. And then I used to cycle to the cottage. I, this is the thing, back, if we go back to 73, 74, I was a very keen cyclist. I used to do a fair bit of racing. And it was all about training. And all it, that meant was doing miles. I was out most nights, so yeah, I used to look forward to a Saturday 40 mile bike ride <laughs> after school. Madness, what was I thinking? It did change once we got into mopeds and things, and suddenly life then got very different, and then cars, etc., took over at age 17. As anybody growing up in the 70s probably remembers, you wanted a car to impress. I sort of modify this Volkswagen Beetle. 1700cc, holly car, wider wings. It was impossible to insure. I ended up having to buy insurance on a monthly basis. You just used to have this cover note. God knows if I really was insured or not, I really don't know. But it kept me mobile and then went off to agricultural college. But lots of happy memories down here. But I never expected to be driving around. And you'll join us probably somewhere in North Wales on some more interesting roads. As you can probably tell already, it's quite a snorty little car this. Lights to rev, I'm only doing three and a half thousand RPM. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah. Quite a busy car. Well, welcome to Moldvammer. This is the car park for lots of walks around here. We've come through Mold and we'll have a look. Riffin is just over there and the Moldvammer is up there. It's just, you see this sort of turret on top of a, I would call it a mountain or hill. I'm not sure. It's 555 meters height elevation. So it's well over a thousand foot. I thought that was the definition of a mountain. I am not sure. But uh, yeah, that felt like a rally stage coming up here. This single track, this, this is the sort of route that we used to take to the cottage. As I say, my father was obsessed with miles per gallon. So coming over Mulvama just saved a few miles. Most people use the main road. If you come over here, I'll just show you on a map. Say so just 27 miles from home. It always got me how close all this was. So Birkenhead, that's where we were, nipped down the motorway, came across, nothing really to report. Mold gets a little bit um, Lanferis around here, it's just a bit more interesting. What we've done is just cut across there, it's that little white road there is the one we're on. There's Mulvama there, and it just cuts out the main road, which is very scenic, but lots of speed limits. And then we're going to drop down to the Riffin down there. And the road I'm actually going to take you on is once we get to the Riffin there, it's this B5105, and that was our road. Many of the Whig was where our cottage was and it was just I'm not saying it's an epic road or whatever but this was the bit I used to dream of in my cars my Beatles and motorbikes is taken along here and if you continue on you get to Kerrigadridian and then that is a sort of area very famous in Evo land because this is the Evo triangle Kerrigadridian is on one of the points of that triangle so that's yeah these are the roads I knew as a 17 year old 18 year old when i lived up on the wirral this is where we all wanted to come drive the cars bikes etc now yeah the car it as you can tell from that drive up here it's it's just feels like a rally car i mean alancia fulvia is famous for its you know rally monte carlo etc it won forget its front wheel drive this is like a, a say overpowered mini and it barks away you're not going crazy quick, but it feels mighty quick behind the wheel. And that's what I really like about this car, this mix of sort of old fashioned, typical sports car and all, all this noise and sensations, but you're not going madly quick. I'm just going to open the engine because it is a bit of a star. I hope you can hear me because it's slightly windy today. I'm just going to go around the other side. Oh yeah, one other thing on this car big surprise as you know it has this electronic sort of raising tailgate this is your rear window on this car you learn it down or have it up like this and you also have to um, put it up so you can open the tailgate the boot on this car is vast i had no idea i never really thought about it but there's three bags just lost in there i've got the rear seat area if you call that a rear seat for coats and things it is huge the boot on this who would have thought this tiny little car would have such a big boot what i was explaining about those trumpets and things that hiding under these foam 
uh, air cleaners here, you have these intake trumpets, they're called, and they're very short, the ones on this Carveretta. So this initial tune was done on the short trumpets, and you generally fit longer trumpets, and you get better low-down torque. And there's one issue with this engine. It's the way it runs below 2,000 RPM, which makes taking off a bit tricky, and it just starts to splutter. It is, it's got an uprated cam, but it's not a race cam. This is still a rally cam, and I think we will improve it by putting those trumpets on. But I keep having to open the bonnet on this car because it's just a jewel of an engine. And it's all up front, all there. And I love the way it's a subframe. There's no rear drive on this car. This is where all the action is. And it just drops out, as you saw during the rebuild period. It's a sort of easy and very visual sort of engine. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to disappear off. It's a glorious view the other side as we drop down. You see the Riffin in the valley and then we'll go into the Riffin, lovely little market town, and then we'll head up that road to Kerrigadridgin, which is my dream road as a 17 year old. It's a wonderful vista. If you get weather like this, it's just terrific coming over here. It used to really get me because you're, as I say, 27 miles from Oxton this just felt like another world we'd entered and it's you know especially when it's just sort of dual carriageway and then suddenly as you go come out of bold all this opens up i've actually um, rarely go up the other way it's quite steep this track and that last bit i can remember for whatever reason going out of a mate as a dare whether we could get up in the snow in the beetle and um yeah, with the big fat tires what were we thinking but we were young and foolish and we had to reverse all the way down we just couldn't quite make it over the top but and when i used to do my bike would come out on the bike after school on a saturday i used to go this way because it was quite a gentle slope over Mulvam, and then it was quite exciting the descent down but i never did it the other way around it was it's very steep there's some um, there's a corner here and it's one in four it might even be one in three really steep really testing our citroen diane six used to just limp around this corner it reminds me of the hard knock sort of pass in lake district worth just blowing the horn just in case because you don't want to stop on this corner and it gets very narrow very nagety and you really don't want to meet any cars as you go further down anyway then it opens up on the main road into Riffy that will be just in a moment and there's these cattle grids you sort of race between the known passing spaces if you're a local you get you know a move on so so you can get there before a car appears of this road to Kerrigadridian. But it's, I've noticed that's different uh, since I was you know, the 70s. It's just all the speed limits. This is a 30 limit all the way out. This wasn't 30 as long as this. So I have to hesitate before doing this. And again, this, I'm going to Clough Newith. It's the next sort of village on this road. And my father's challenge was whether he could free wheel from Clough Newith all the way to Riffin. Okay, to save fuel. Right, we've gone through the D limit side.
this section of road. I have to say this does ride reasonably well. There's no rattles and thumps and sort of things loose in this car. We're even just coming into Clouth Newid, which looks like Cluid Newid. One of the things I learned when we lived out here is double D is F, if you're pronouncing it well. So Clouth Newid, not Cluid Newid. We've lucked out with the weather, which is great. And the traffic's not too bad either. initially I had half full when you filled it up and it went down you, you 
thought you were empty and only put 20 litres in to fill it up with a 38 litre tank. Now it's just stuck on half full and doesn't move at all. So we'll try and fix that. And then before we do the proper engine dyno run, I'm not sure about the exhaust on it. This is the original exhaust that I brought the car with because I've had a bunch of banana type manifold fitters in the engine. When we all hooked it up, it went inside the pipe coming away from the engine and that sort of is acting as a restrictor and also I'm not sure it's the good sound, it's a bit tinny and I think it should be more mellow and quieter really in this day and age. I, I want the induction bark more than I want exhaust sound so I'm going to investigate getting a bigger bore exhaust to make maximise the effect of the manifold and also perhaps make it a little bit quieter. Is there anything else? Well, not really. Handling's great. Um, but there's a very little snagging list, really. There's no sweet rattles to fix. Might get inertia seat belts so I can get to the glove box a bit easier. I'll just go through here. Yeah, just basically get to know it. We're just approaching. 929 miles. I think we ought to have at least 2,000 miles before we put it on the dyno and get the true power figures. I don't think it's going to be earth shattering the power. I would expect a sort of 130 horsepower, something like that. But it's more about just enjoying this car, just dragging it through those gears, enjoying that bark, and my new motto of trying to drive quickly but slowly. And this car just exemplifies that motto for me. And it's been terrific to drive down my favourite bit of road. I hope you've enjoyed this journey down memory lane for me and more about the Lancia Fulvia Zagato 1600. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.